We pick up exactly where we left off in the last movie, where we did some basic keyframing and some best methods, how to think about approaching keyframes and what it means. However, with the animation we created, we have an anomaly going on right now. And that anomaly is the fact that when we drag the timeline indicator, we get the star point stretching down as we had done. We have it returning to a perfect star shape right here. And when we started the animation, it was a perfect star all the way from the center of the workspace over to the right-hand side. But now when we drag our indicator over, we see that the star actually kind of deforms. Well, what exactly is going on here to cause that? Well, that is a function of tweening. Tweening is how the program, like the junior animators for keyframing, figures out how to create the motion in between keyframes. And when we added this point out here on the right-hand side, when we extended the point down, it changed the way the program interpolates between the key points. I've got an extra set down here, and that was a total accident when I had the time marker down here by 18 and clicked on the point to show that it was looking funny. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that by clicking and dragging around that and pressing delete on the keyboard. Let's go back and take a look at exactly what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and come back to our channels section here. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to delete all the animation action that's going on. I'll click and drag it here. Unless you're in the channels view, you can't concurrently delete all the keyframes. You have to be in the channels view to do that. So I highlight those, press delete, and our star is back to the beginning. So let's go ahead and click again. We'll start at 30. I'm going to click with the translate tool, highlights all the points. We see keyframes added. I'm going to shift drag just to keep it straight across 30. We'll come back to 60 like we did before. But before I click that keyframe, let's come back to the motion graph. Let me set it up at 30 so we can see what's going on. I'm going to click off the star and click the one point. And now we're going to see the actual motion for that one particular point. We have a really nice exit from that first keyframe, and it comes up and then tapers off right before it gets to the next keyframe. So when I come down to 60, I'll get ready to click on this point here and drag it. But watch what happens as I do that to the actual entry and exit of the tween line for this x-axis. Red is x, green is y, and if we were to work in 3D space with this, we would have another one that is blue, which would be the z-axis coming directly towards the viewers. So I'll click on this and drag and release. Now watch the timeline as I let go and it automatically adds a keyframe. We can see that the tweening line shifted. It was no longer quite as aggressive, and it's the program helping us out in a default mode called Smooth. Now, that's just the way the program works in the smooth tweener mode. There's another mode we'll select here shortly, and I'll show you that it prevents that. But this is a great default tweener mode because it does a pretty good job most of the time. If I want to stay in the tweener mode of smooth, how would I fix it so that I don't get this kind of strange behavior going on? Well, I'll show you how to do that now. I'll undo this with Command or Control Z, depending on your system. We're going to move the timeline indicator back to 31, just one beyond the other keyframe. What I'll do is click this point, and it will automatically add another keyframe, and this acts like a buffer when you're in the smooth tweener mode. We'll come back to 60, and now I'll click and drag it down again, and we can see that we get a change in distances exhibited right here, and part of it's going off the screen. That's a function of scale, so I'm going to use the mouse wheel or the little scroll area on my mouse, and pull that down and change the scale so I can see the entire area here. If you want, you can do auto-zoom. That also kind of fills up the screen with the active area you're looking at. But what that extra point did is it kind of secured and hammered down the functions exiting this one keyframe right here and then allows the program to interpret it all the way along. So this is an anomaly for smooth tweening. But each type of tweening method has its own little funny behaviors. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of them and then talk about why and where you would use some of these extra tweening methods. I'll come back to channel to highlight by clicking and dragging and simply delete the animation steps that we've done so far. If we wanted and you've got a timeline that goes way off to the right, if you right click you can drag around your timeline. In longer animations you'll actually have a whole bunch of keyframes moving all the way down or they're very deep this way because we have multiple items being animated. You can come up to the animation, clear animation, and in this case from this layer. So I'll click that, everything has gone away. All right, let me come over here, and we will go ahead and move our star. I'll click and highlight that. Keyframe is added. I'll click and drag it over here, 
and at frame 60, I'm going to move it back. Now, nothing looks like it's happening here. However, if we open the motion graph, and I happen to select a point, we'll just say this one here, we can see that we get a really nice smooth line going on. I'm going to come back and demonstrate which tweener method we would use to prevent the type of strange little artifact we had with smooth, but I'll wait till we explore a couple of these so you can see exactly what's going on. The smooth method is really nice because you get this very nice type of interpolation between events, but the problem is if we add another keyframe right here, it can change the in-out exit points. How do you change the points of a specific keyframe? Well, you click and drag, or just select it directly, and you right-click on the mouse. From here, we have options of linear, ease in, ease out, and let's take a look at those in just a sec. But the difference between doing a direct selection and selecting up here where we've got these options is that the one in the timeline bar will change the way subsequent keyframes are made. It doesn't change the ones already in place. So if you want to change the ones that exist, then you actually have to select them and then right-click to make that modification. We'll go ahead and continue this in our next movie.